Honorable Principal Nirmala College Ranchi and patron of the five-day online skill development program, Dr. Sister Jyoti, Vice Principal Sister Shobha, our esteemed mentor and resource person for the day, Dr. Keerthi Abhishek from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, BIT Mesra Ranchi, our esteemed CP coordinator and head of the Department Geography, Dr. Devjani Roy, organizing committee members, faculty members of various departments and dear participants. I wish you all a blessed and a very good morning. On behalf of the organizing committee, I extend a warm welcome to each one of you to the day two, session three of the five days online skill development program on the basics of GIS, RS, GPS, organized by CP committee and Department of Geography Nirmala College Ranchi in collaboration with BIT Mesra Ranchi and sponsored under the UGC CP scheme. I am Dr. Sukanya and I will be your host and moderator for the day. The rapid development and integration of spatial technologies such as GIS, RS and GPS has created new tools for extension professionals and have also added to the digital divide leaving many of us with little or no understanding of the widely used technologies and their potential applications worldwide. Under the patronage and guidance of our visionary principal, Dr. Sister Jyoti, a need for value addition and skill empowerment of students in the field of spatial technologies was envisioned and immediately actualized by a dynamic CP coordinator, Dr. Dev Chan Roy. As we ascend to the second day of the five days online skill development program, I seek the blessings and permission of our chair to begin this session. Sister's permission, you can start. Sister was there. Okay, okay. So with your permission, may we begin? I think sister is busy somewhere. You can start. Okay, okay ma'am. Thank you, sister. And thank you, Dr. Roy. The world that we live in is increasingly challenged by population growth, pollution, overconsumption, unsustainable patterns of livelihood, social conflict, erratic climate changes, and loss of nature. There is alarming evidence that important tipping points leading to irreversible changes in ecosystem and planetary climate may have been already reached. It is imperative here to study these changes and seek solutions through technologies that have capacity to provide solutions for environmental restoration and conservation. It is here that spatial technologies like GIS, RS, and GPS play a vital role. These technologies, when used individually or in combination, span a broad range of applications like precision farming, crop management, and environmental resource management to cite a few. The analytics of GIS and RS helps to identify patterns of vegetation and other natural resources provide classification of crop changes in vegetation studies, environmental impacts on vegetation and crop yield, providing basis for resource management. In our current session, our esteemed resource person, Dr. Kiti Abhishek, will take us through the spectral signatures and photo interpretation keys. Our mentor for the day, will edify us on the interpretation of satellite data using visual interpretation keys with the objective of helping the participants identify the features of Earth using satellite data and with special emphasis on environmental issues and resource management. I now request Dr. Vishek to take over the session. A humble request to the participants to be calm and composed Put in your queries in short and direct and relevant queries on your YouTube chat and comment section. Please be calm in case of any technical anomalies and wait for further instructions. Our mentor would like you to be interactive throughout the session. 
So we welcome all your queries and from time to time, our mentor will try to answer them. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Chakravarti. Uh, let me first give a warm greeting to Sister Jyoti, uh, Vice Principal, uh, Dr. Devjani Roy, Dr. Parveen Zaira, Dr. Shirupa Roy, and other members of Nirmala Fraternity. And uh, I think uh, today's session should be a bit more interesting uh, as compared to the day one, which was more on theories. So day two will have some kind of sessional exposures. So we'll, we'll be doing some kind of more uh, uh, interpretation of satellite data. So keeping that in mind, we have, uh, we have, we have framed our PowerPoint presentations. And uh, I will only say as of, uh, as of today that uh, welcome to the world of artistic GIS. And so let us play with colors today. So all the participants should be ready to play with colors today. So with this, uh, I'll be sharing my slide. And further based on uh, yesterday's feedback, uh, we, uh, we got to know that some students were facing the language issue because of English. So maybe at times I will be shifting to Hindi language also and explaining you certain things which may be suitable for uh, some of you. So it's, it, it will be a combination of both the languages. And uh, okay, let's start then. I would request to kindly enable the screen sharing option. So I hope uh, students had a very nice and uh, informative session yesterday. Uh, just a quick recap of what we did was we studied the basic phenomena of remote sensing all the way from the source of energy to atmospheric interactions, to ground interactions, to satellite sensors, and receiving the sensors back to radars and ground interpretation and so if you remember in remote sensing, we have two different types of energy levels. One is the active and one is the passive source of energy level. Sun is a passive source of energy level and we are using sun for optical remote sensing. If you remember yesterday, the speaker, Dr. Praveen Zara was also dealing with microwave remote sensing and thermal remote sensing. But today what we are dealing is only about optical remote sensing. So we focus on optical today and microwave and thermal is not in your component because they are of a bit higher standards now. So maybe you will not be able to go up with it. So keeping that in mind, we are just initiating with optical remote sensing. Uh, I hope uh, there was a query yesterday, like what was the different, what do you mean by target and what are the target things? So basically I would again continue with what Dr. Zera had uh, told yesterday that basically when the energy levels are being released, so these energy levels will come and interact with every feature on the ground. So those ground features through which these energy levels are interacting is called a target, it's with the targets. It's almost similar. For instance, one single energy level is being released, but it is being intercepted and understood and uh, responded by different features. Almost similar to like, if I can assume myself as a source of energy, because uh, being a teacher, if I am, speaking something, there's a knowledge flow, and that knowledge flows in one direction to all of you. But all individual of you will be accepting it, reverting back to it, understanding it in a different way. Similarly, the radiations which are being released are reaching the Earth's surface, and every feature on the Earth's surface will be responding to it in a different pattern. So it is almost similar to that. So one single radiations, but the radiation reactions and analysis vary depending upon forest. Even in forest, whether it's a healthy forest or a degraded forest, then with water bodies, whether it is a turbid, polluted, clear, deep, shallow, so every different kind of water bodies will be reacting in a different pattern. So 
is uh, this is the whole mechanism of remote sensing. Okay, so uh, we have to understand the sun is a source of electromagnetic spectrum. Entire energy is being and is entering our yeah, earth, and based on our ability to respond, every for every feature, whether it is a forest or a water body or a sand or open land or a building, uh, roads, agriculture, crop height, everything will start varying accordingly. And when these uh, variations are there, so they are then captured by the uh, sensors, then sent back to ground information from where we start our application process. So let us see what I have, I will covering today. Uh, we are starting with the recap, uh, with some of what we did yesterday. Then I'll be dealing with spectral signatures, resolution, and photo interpretation. Uh, if you remember yesterday, the last slide where, where we discontinued was where Dr. Zera was on the spectral response of vegetation, soil, and water. So I'm starting from here. So that there's a continuity between each slides. So, if you don't understand this, I'll explain it again. This is the green line, that is the vegetation line, or the vegetation response. That is the vegetation line, or the vegetation response. That is the electromagnetic radiation space, the vegetation response. If you understand these lines, it is starting from somewhere around uh, close to zero, and reaches as high as 0.5. Then goes to uh, a bit of wave, uh, 1400 wavelength, then drops again. Then you have a peak, then drops. So if you look at this green vegetation and normal graph, if whenever you plot it, you'll be able to understand the peak shows higher response. So the higher the higher the response, higher the uh, peak. So what it is showing basically is uh, vegetation is responding very high between 600 to 1400 nanometers after which it drops. So there are certain characteristics in which they are responding. Now, if you look at this specific figure and in the top, it's written near infrared. And before near infrared, it is written blue, green, and red. So blue, green, and red is the optical range. That means optical means If you look at your surrounding, you will be able to see plants as green. Why do you see plants as green? Because plants, absorb all the other colors and they reflect only the green. So that wavelength is then accepted by our eyes. So we look at it as green. So what we see with our naked eye is in blue, green and red. Near infrared band, jo hai, it is an inv invisible band. But zyada is my information dikhai de hai. If you look at the specific curve, the maximum information is obtained in the near infrared band. Now the question arises, we are able to see in blue, green, and red, whereas the highest response is observed in near infrared. So our capability to understand vegetation studies is limited to only 0 0.1, 0.2, information. whereas in case of near infrared band, the response is very high. But now it is colorless. So the things that which we are seeing is giving less response. Things which we cannot see is giving higher response. So NIR band being a colorless band gives a higher response, but we cannot see it. So to make it visible, we start play with playing with the colors. So we add red color to the near infrared band. So near infrared band, you have the color guns in satellite images so you with the help of color guns these information are depicted so the vegetation pattern hai, wo sabse zyada near infrared band mein observe hota hai lekin kyunki wo colorless band hai isliye wo information hamare naked eye ko dikhta nahi hai to make it visible we are adding a red color in it so that the vegetation response can be visible if you search Google search and if you write down FCC of forest, then you will see all everything will be appearing in red tone because that's the false color, not the true color. True color may forest will appear green, water bodies will appear blue. So, but in a false color, things will start 
चेंजिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेजिटेशन विल अपियर रेड क्योंकि नियर इंफ्रा रेड सो द बैंड इज कॉल्ड नियर इंफ्रा रेड एन आई आर द नियरस्ट बैंड विच इज विजिबल टू इट इज द रेड बैंड सो वी आर गिविंग दैट स्पेसिफिक कलर टू दी वेजिटेशन ग्रोथ I hope this is understood. Since it is a vegetation growth, and if you look at the curve, the curve goes up in the near infrared band. So higher information कहाँ आ रहा है? Near infrared band में आ रहा है. लेकिन क्योंकि near infrared band colorless है, तो वो हमें दिख नहीं सकता है. उसको visibly observe करने के लिए we have to feed a color into it, and then it will be visible to us. I hope uh, it's fine. Similarly, if you look at the same graph, the one with the brown line, brown line shows the dry bare soil. So the reflectance of dry bare soil is starting from below point two. It reaches till point five. Then you have dips at in intervals. But this is the dry bare soil, and then you have water bodies, which is very low, approximately near zero, and it it almost ends at the same range. Again. now the question arises if the plants or the soil have high water content then how it will change this curve will change depending on the water content so if it is a dry bare soil this specific curve is observed suppose it is in a monsoon season or a paddy field so again this this curve will go down because the moisture content is increasing so anything which is dry will give, give you a higher reflectance anything which is having moisture will give you a lower reflectance okay i hope this is clear now so anything which is dry will give a higher reflectance anything which is having moisture content water content will give you a lower reflectance so these are certain factors which control the responses of soils so this is the more clear picture of was just one feature again which i have which was dealt yesterday of vegetation pattern where you see in micrometers it is mentioned that in visible range the responses can be seen from 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers 0.7 to 1.3 1.4 micrometers for near infrared and then you have short infrared and if you look at this graph it is written water absorption so wherever you have water absorption there is a dip in the curve that mean water is one specific factor which results in decline of the reflectance okay so wherever there is high water content so reflectance will go down and chlorophyll percentage the information that we gather based on chlorophyll is also very less so there are three different factors which control the reflectance or the information from layman language mein bolenge to jo information hame satellite data se mil sakta hai with reference to any of any kind of vegetation is dependent upon chlorophyll mesophyll tissues and water absorption so these specific curves अब मिजोफेल टिश्यूज पे सबसे ज्यादा रिफ्लेक्टेंस का इंफॉर्मेशन आ रहा है मतलब स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द लीव कंट्रोल्स द मैक्सिमम इंपॉर्टेंस इन दिस एवरी प्लांट जो बॉटनी वाले होंगे दे विल एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ एवरी लीव हैज अ डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर डिफरेंट नंबर्स ऑफ मिजोफेल सेल्स डिफरेंट लेयर्स द स्पेसिंग और द एयर स्पेस बिटवीन देम इज आल्सो वेरिंग So some leaves are thin, some leaves are needle-like, some are broad leaves. So sal forest is broad. Uh, then you have pine, which is needle. So you have different what percentage of chlorophyll, different percentage of water, different percentage of mesophyll. So if you this way, if you can imagine it, the sal ke patte chaude hote, mote hote hain. So in that percentage of mesophyll will be bigger, more, more will be there. Air space will be more there. This is because water, which water droplets are holding, will be more there. That will be more there. सिमिलरली अगर हम नीडल का देखते हैं पाइन ट्रीज का देखते हैं तो पाइन ट्रीज वेरी स्मॉल थिन लीव्स सो उसमें ऑब्वियसली परसेंटेज कम तो जब ये वैरी कर रहा है तो वी विल बी एबल टू डिस्टिंग्विश एनी टू प्लांट स्पीशीज सो ऑल द वे फ्रॉम ग्रासेस टू डेंस फॉरेस्ट सब एक का कलर वैरी करेगा ओके सर देर इज अ रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम पार्टिसिपेंट्स 
for you to explain yes. the concepts in a bit of hindi also because i think most of them they we have a huge lot of them the question okay. is to speak in hindi so acha at least the concepts ha ah, fine 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 main abhi jo bol raha tha will that be fine jitna bola to fir se repeat kar do should i repeat again participants should i repeat again i think uh, you may repeat it once again ha huh. acha I'm starting with slide number one again. अब यहाँ पे तुम लोग देखोगे participants please see there are three different curves. एक water curve है, एक vegetation curve है और एक soil curve है. So जो water curve है वो सबसे कम दिखा रहा है. वो क्यों कम दिखा रहा है? क्योंकि water is a universal absorber energy. So whatever energy release होता है वो सारे एनर्जी को एब्जॉर्ब कर लेता है तो जब एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब हो जाएगा तो बहुत कम एमिट होगा तो जब एमिशन कम होगा तो रीचिंग द सैटेलाइट विल आल्सो बी लो सो द सैटेलाइट विल बी एबल टू डिटेक्ट ओनली फ्यू रेस्पॉन्सेस बिकॉज मैक्सिमम पोर्शन ऑफ द एनर्जी इज गेटिंग एब्जॉर्ब इफ यू कम टू द सेकेंड कर विच इज द ग्रीन कर द ग्रीन कर इज बेस्ड अपॉन दिजिटेशन पैटर्न और वेजिटेशन पैटर्न में क्या दिख रहा है इस स्पेसिफिक स्लाइड में ये जो नियर इंफ्रारेड बैंड है उसमें सबसे ज्यादा रिफ्लेक्टेंस आ रहा है आप अपने वाई एक्सिस को देखोगे तो यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वाई एक्सिस इज शोइंग दैट नियर इंफ्रारेड के रीजन में जो रिस्पॉन्स है वो कर हाई हो जा रहा है हाई to information we will be able to receive will be much higher okay so two different of the two different aspect we have to understand over here ek hai jo hum log visible dekh pa rahe hain the blue green red ye primary colors hota hai jiske basis pe sare colors ko formation hote hain so red green blue are uh, responses which we are able to see the based based on red green blue तो हम लोग कोई भी इंफॉर्मेशन तब लेंगे जब उसका रेड ब्लू ग्रीन में कम होता है और नियर इंफ्रा रेड में ज्यादा होता है ठीक है तो लेकिन नियर इंफ्रा रेड तो कलरलेस बैंड है अब कलरलेस बैंड को कैसे देखा जाए so, क्योंकि वो कलरलेस बैंड है सबसे ज्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन आ रहा है उसके इंफॉर्मेशन है उस बैंड में मतलब वो हमारे सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है तो उससे हमें विजिबल करना है तो विजिबल कैसे करते हैं वी आर और पासिंग अ रेड कलर ये करता है तो दिस कलर इज देन इम्पॉर्टेंट टू एन आई आर बैंड सो रेड कलर बिकम्स विजिबल फॉर वेजिटेशन वेजिटेशन पैटर्न है वो लाल कलर में दिखाई देंगे आपको सैटेलाइट के डेटा में ठीक है उसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि वेजिटेशन लाल हो गया इंफॉर्मेशन है कि जितना वेजिटेशन है उसका जो इंफॉर्मेशन है वो रेड <coughs> में ऑब्जर्व हो रहा है बट वो रिफ्लेक्ट कर रहा है एन आई आर के इंफॉर्मेशन को सिमिलरली यू हैव द ग्रीन मरून बैंड द मरून बैंड शोज दी सॉइल ड्राई सॉइल कर ड्राई सॉइल कर इज शोइंग हायर परसेंटेज लेकिन जहां अगर मॉइस्चर आ जाता है बारिश के दिन सपोज बारिश के दिन है तो जो रिफ्लेक्टेंस होगा वो कम हो जाएगा इज दैट ओके सो द रिफ्लेक्टेंस ऑफ सॉइल इफ इट इज मॉइस्ट विल बी लो इफ इट इज ड्राई विल बी हाई क्यों क्योंकि वॉटर इज अब्सॉर्ब है एब्जॉर्बन कैपेसिटी ऑफ दी एनर्जी लेवल्स इज दैट ओके So I am going to the next slide now. <coughs> जो हम लोग ने उस समय clarify किया सेम चीज अभी फिर से repeat कर रहा हूँ with more clarification. सिर्फ एक band को लेकर चलो Suppose you are taking vegetation. So in case of vegetation, the maximum information किस में आ रहा है Near infrared. Now you can see this this specific slide. इसमें नियर इंफ्रा रेड में सबसे ज्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन आ रहा है इसलिए उसका पीक जो आ रहा है वो ऊपर जा रहे हैं ग्राफ विजिबल बैंड में वो कम हो रहा है अब विजिबल बैंड में हम लोगों को चीजें दिखाई देती हैं वो क्यों दिखाई देती हैं क्लोरोफिल के कंटेंट के कारण दिखाई देती है 
तो हम लोग जब एक्सपीशन को एनालाइज करते हैं विजिबल बैंड में वो सिर्फ क्लोरोफिल कंटेंट क्लोरोफिल ए हो सकता है क्लोरोफिल बी हो सकता है इट कैन बी जैंथोफिल तो बेस ऑन दोस कलर हम लोग कंट्रास्टिंग विश कर पा रहे हैं जैसे ग्रीन डार्क ग्रीन है लाइट ग्रीन है मरून शेड है तो बेस ऑन क्लोरोफिल कंटेंट जबकि इफ यू गो टू द नियर इंफ्रारेड बैंड इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द मीजोफिल सेल मतलब जो प्लांट का जो लीफ है लीफ का जो स्ट्रक्चर है उसके ऊपर डिपेंड करता है तो लीफ का स्ट्रक्चर नो विल वेरी एवरीवेयर ओके लीफ का स्ट्रक्चर विल वेरी एवरीवेयर तो डिफरेंट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द प्लांट स्पीशीज इट विल स्टार्ट वेरिंग इज दैट ओके तो हर एक प्लांट यू मस्ट हैव ऑब्जर्व कि हर एक प्लांट का डिफरेंट लीफ होता है तो डिफरेंट लीव का डिफरेंट टाइप हो जाते हैं अगर एक पेड़ है जिसका पेड़ सम पोर्शन इज डिजीज सो दैट ऑल्सो गेट्स अफेक्ट मोल्टिंग होना शुरू हो जाता है एवरीथिंग अफेक्ट्स द रेस्पॉन्सेज तो सेटेलाइट डेटा से अगर तुम स्टडी करना चाहोगे तो यू कैन एक्चुअली स्टडी कि हाउ द वेजिटेशन पैटर्न इज चेंजिंग कब उसका लीव ग्रोथ हो रहा है कब कौन सा पोर्शन में डिजीज पोर्शन आ रहे हैं एवरीथिंग कैन बी मॉनिटर एंड एज आई सेड वॉटर इज अवर्सल एब्जॉर्बर तो जहां जहां भी पानी रहेगा चाहे वो सॉइल हो चाहे वो बिल्डिंग्स हो चाहे वो लीफ हो वेर एवर वॉटर इज कंटेंट वहां पर रेडिएशन कम होगा सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन दिस द इंटायर कॉन्सेप्ट इज ऑफ रिमोट सेंसिंग विल बी मूविंग अराउंड ओके आई विल मूव फॉरवर्ड इफ देर इज स्टिल सम डाउट एट द एंड विल अगेन कम बैक टू दिसिफिक साइड सो डोंट वरी हैव रिकैप अगेन Uh, at so at this point uh, roshni um yeah somebody you know aditya anand asks what is spongy mesophyll spongy mesophylls are a part of mesophilic tissues which are present inside the leaves leaves ko jab cutting karte hain dissection karte hain so jo botanist honge they will be able to tell you much in better way spongy mesophylls are Tissues which are present inside or cells present inside the leaf structure. So these are present inside the leaf structure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are no questions as of now, so we can proceed further. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, whenever we talk about satellite data, it's it's like in a layman language you can say it's like a camera taking pictures from a top level. Now. Uh, when you ever whenever you take a camera and i like instead of i told i discussed something about uh, resolutions ki jitna acha carl zeiss camera they have a very high sensors so resolution is also very important nowadays whenever you are initially when we used to buy smartphones or mobile phones we used to see the other uh, other uh, uh, characteristics of the mobile but now if you see resolution has become such a important part of it so we want to have a good camera with high pixel फ्रंट कैमरा का रेजोल्यूशन क्या है बैक कैमरा का रेजोल्यूशन क्या है सो रेजोल्यूशन इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट वेन एवर वी आर डीलिंग विद एनी काइंड ऑफ फोटोग्राफी और इन काइंड ऑफ सैटेलाइट डेटा एक्विजिशन तो नॉट वील बी स्टार्टिंग विद रेजोल्यूशन तो वन इज स्पेशल रेजोल्यूशन स्पेक्ट्रल रेजोल्यूशन टेम्पोरल रेजोल्यूशन radiometric resolutions so four different types of resolution affect the quality of image that we are going to have <coughs> spatial resolution <coughs> spatial resolution as the word space suggest space space okay spatial matlab space kitna space ko capture kar raha hai so for example Uh, uh, in a in a if the landsat satellite data says it has a spatial resolution of 30 meters that means it can observe a region or a space of 30 by 30 so it can accurately distinguish kisi bhi do feature ko within 30 to 30 meter ke range mein wo distinguish kar sakta hai okay so this is the whole concept of spatial resolution hello i hope i am audible Yes, sir. You are. You are. Okay. Okay. So, thirty meter resolution is there. Fine. So, I am again repeating. Spatial resolution means space, jaga, kitna wo occupy kar sakta hai, kitna wo clearly distinguish kar sakta hai. 
So Landsat is having 30 meter resolution, which means that if two objects are there <coughs> of 30 meters long and wide, then Landsat will be able to distinguish these two features with full clarity. So 30 by 30 K feature ko ye baut achche se distinguish kar sakta hai. That's called a spatial resolution. Then we have spectral resolution. Now, if you remember, kal last class mein the madam padha rahi thi aap logo spectral resolution, spectral bands. So, jo bands hota hai, wahi resolution hota hai. <coughs> For instance, spectral band agar red, green, blue, or NIR hai, but now we are having four different types of spectral bands. Red, green, blue, and NIR. So the number of spectral resolution is four. If it is RGB, only red, green, blue, the spectral resolution is three. Okay. So spectral resolution kaise depend karta hai? Depend karta hai ki wo specific sensor kitne wavelengths ko capture kar pa raha hai. That's called a spectral resolution. If a sensor is only able to catch one wavelength, suppose red, that means it is a one band resolution. If it is having three red, green, blue, the so spectral resolution is teen ho jayega. If red, green, blue, or NIR, then so the spectral resolution is four ho jayega. Fine. For example, kal jo padhaye the uh, inaugural session mein IRS. Indian uh, IRS satellite ka jo list three sensor hai, usme char bands hai, char spectral bands hai, red, green, blue, and IR. Okay, so that means the spectral resolution refers to the number of wavelengths to which a specific sensor is sensitive to. <coughs> is that okay? the number of wavelengths to which a specific sensor is sensitive to. It can be one, one meaning panchromatic, black and white, if it is three, so it is RGB, if it is four, multispectral, so the number of bands can increase or decrease. sensor So we have to be very careful to call the spectral resolution time. Now, if you look at the satellite image, this is a quick bird. It's a true color image and with a pseudo color image also, both side by side. So this is the difference. If it is a panchromatic, so one single image. If it is color, so a colorful image. So one single band, one single black and white image, multi or pseudo color image will be the red white side. Is the different Then third one is the temporal resolution. Temporal matlab time based. Temporal time based. Okay? <coughs> First was spatial, matlab the space that it can cover. Second is spectral number of bands, spectral bands. Third is temporal which is time-based and acquisition. That means at some point you get the set, same set of information. A satellite jo hota hai, wo earth ke charo turaf revolve kar raha hai. So, aaj agar Ranchi ke upar hai, to Ranchi se agar wo aaj move kar raha hai, to kitne dino ke baad wo vapas Ranchi ke upar hai. So, that's called a temporal resolution. So if it is some, some have 22 days, some have 28 days. So that will vary. Her ek sensor ka alag temporal resolution hai. So likewise, we have different temporal resolution. Is kaha apply karenge? Temporal resolution is applied for identifying floods. Okay, aaj flood ka ye condition tha. 10 days ke baad yahaan pohuncha hai. 40 days ke baad yahaan pohuncha hai. We have change of satellite data after every 28 days. So we can easily monitor how the things are changing <coughs> different purposes for instance you might be looking at seeing the websites in the news channels like today we have monitored in this Ladakh region some vehicles are moving yesterday it was not there so this is all based on temporal resolutions a time based gap make it may gap information okay 
Then last one is the radiometric resolution. The radiometric resolution is number of electronic signals. कि कितने electronic signals को sensor बहुत अच्छे से capture कर सकता है. So जो computer science background के बच्चे होंगे, they might be aware of bits. Seven bit होता है, eight bit होता है. So they are in an they are in the form of zero and one. So if we say uh, seven bit, that means two to the power n. 2 into 2 to the power 7, but 7 times 2 to the power 7. So that means it becomes 127 signals. So 2 to the power n and n is 7, 7 bit. So 2 to the power 7 becomes 120, uh, so 128. And 8 bit by 256. So other sensor 8 bit hai, matlab it can uh, detect 256 signals, but love even higher range. So jitna higher range rahega, utna variation jo aayega tone ka quality ka wo vary kar jayega 7 bit thoda sa kam hai 128 signals hai so it will be only uh, ranging the whole division based on 128 signals okay so uh, with this the ending resolutions i am repeating once again <coughs> we have four different types of resolution the first one is spatial spatial resolution refers to space the space occupied that is 30 by 30. So 30 by 30 is the space occupied. Then comes uh, spectral. Spectral is sensitiveness to bands. Kitne wavelengths ko wo capture kar sakta hai sensor. Kitne wavelengths ko wo accept read kar pa raha hai. So that capacity is called your spectral resolution. So one band becomes panchromatic. Three band becomes colored and then becomes multispectral. Okay, so one band is called panchromatic and it is a black and white image. So I'm repeating again. Agar kisi bhi sensor ka capacity is ek spectral band ko detect karne ka hai, that means it is a panchromatic. Okay, it's panchromatic and it will be a black and white image. <coughs> if more than three, it has become multispectral. So likewise, you have many other bands. So accordingly, the things will start changing. Temporal resolution, but love time based resolution. Time based resolution meaning it will be uh, after every how many days or how many hours the same site will be captured again. After how many days or how many hours the same site is going to be captured again. So, what is the rotation? After how many days, how many hours it comes back to the same spot? So, that's called the spare temporal resolution. Radiometric, but love. It is based on the electronic signals. Kitne electronic signals ko ho catch kar sakta hai. Higher the bit, greater the resolution. So, agar 2 to the power 7 hai, matla 7 bit agar satellite image hai, matla it can easily detect 128 signals. So, 128 different electronic signals ko ho capture kar sakta hai. 8 bit image hai, so it will be able to capture 256 image uh, satellite signals. So, likewise, it goes on. Okay. <coughs> so this is what I was telling you. Like, let us see the Indian Remote Sensing Satellite. Uska panchromatic band bhi hai, ek single band, jo 500 micrometers se, 750 micrometers hai, 5.8 meter ka spatial resolution hai. Matlab, wo koi bhi feature aga 5.8 by 5.8 meter ka hai, to achche se clarity se detect hoga. Why agar tum listri mein chale jate ho, so, its resolution becomes 23. So, if any feature is 23 by 23, then it will be able to detect it So, if you talk about clarity, ki baat karoge, so clarity will be higher in a panchromatic image, because it is 5.8, but it will detect the object from the small object. Where the resolution is increased, 23, that means if there is no feature of 23, then it will not distinguish it well. Now, you can see in this slide, there is a red band. <coughs> Just my 188 resolution, like 188 meter, but even larger. Now you can ask me, he said, other 5.8 match at the cram look of 23 together with 188 together with there are there are applications 5.8 meter to have black and white. Hai. It's the interpretation for a difficult to that 23 kya hai, wo moderate size mein hai, and it can give you a better information. 128 is a huge size spatial resolution. That means 
it is useful for regional planning not for city or township planning okay you can go for multiple combination of uh, list 3 satellite data 23 meter square resolution hai usko to merge karke you can go for say, run city like ranchi ka study karne ke liye but agar 188 meter ka hai to usme jo information to city planning ya town planning ke liye use karoge ka koi fayda nahi hoga so it's it's good for large large scale regional planning so 188 is large scale regional planning to different aur sab ka coverage jo hota hai wo vary karta hai so ek user ko wo flexibility diya gaya hai yahan pe ki aap choose karo ki aapko kaun sa chahiye agar aap research kar rahe ho pure india pe and you want 5.8 so you will be it will be very difficult for you ki to 5.8 ke matlab hazaron satellite data ko merge karna fir mosaicing karna to us pe kaam karna वहीं पे अगर तुम विस्ट ले लोगे तो तुम्हारे नंबर डेटा कम हो जाएंगे तो द कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ दिस डेटा विल बिकम इजियर कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव मोर डेटा हैंडलिंग इज इजियर सो एवरीथिंग इज एन एप्लीकेशन जिसके बेसिस पे इन सब का क्लैरिफिकेशन दिया गया है सो आई गो टू द नेक्स्ट लाइन नाउ सो आई वु रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू रीड दिस स्पेसिफिक स्लाइड एंड गिव योर ओपिनियन no hope this slide is visible to all of you now let's start with epic interface it's a very common example this specific man is a culprit or a suspect and he is standing in a specific location so we are not able to see your screen no no uh, i can see him uh, i think there is some technical problem from your side sukanya no ma'am uh, i can see his, sir but i can't see his screen that's correct so uh, i think the slide sharing should be started one second is it he's on he's muted yes, himself please. actually ha huh. so please are you okay? yeah yeah dr kitty uh, the screen yes, sir. Yes, yes, yeah yeah am i audible now yeah yeah you're audible you're visible and your screen is also visible yeah 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 is it okay, okay. Uh, sukanya is it okay yes ma'am absolutely yeah thank you thank you thank you Yes, please continue. So, Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, at this stage, uh, suppose uh, a layman, a person, a culprit is standing in a location, and you have to inform the police that I have identified some suspect in a specific location. How will you do that? Suppose this person is standing. So, can somebody reply in the YouTube chat box, like? Uh, what could be the response of identifying this person like how if you give a call to say yes, that this person is over here so how will you explain the those things i i wait for five minutes you can give your responses
Correct. Priyanshi Mehta, she writes, he's tall, wearing black coat and hat. <coughs> so I completely agree with what Priyanshi Mehta is saying. He's a tall guy. He's wearing a black coat and a hat. Any other responses? I would request the participants to please uh, respond. This is uh, now, now the fun will begin. So it has to, you have to respond back. Any other feature? Yes, Tripti Kumari, please uh, give you. Uh, Yeah, almost the same kind of response. Divyani Ghosh, again, black, very good. Uh, Vinita Tiu, he wears the black coat and hat. Aditya Nand, on the basic of his physical structure. Can you explain further, Aditya Nand? What do you mean by physical structures? Beard, very good, Shivan. Beard is good. His physical appearance. Please elaborate, Aditya. Sumitra Kishku, again a very good response. His location near the water body. Thanks, Upa. Thank you, Devja, Devyani Ghosh. He has a mustache, Ananya, Anshu, standing by the lake. Fine. So, Shri Apriya, near him, you can stand in the location. Okay, he's wearing a black coat. I'm not using a black coat. Uh, Sapna, I hope my voice is. Audible. She is writing that my voice is not audible. <coughs> his height, his skin color, very good. Aditya, I think you are giving very good, interesting responses. Can you please uh, elaborate? For example, if you say skin, so dark circles near his eyes, very good, very good. His physical location, he's standing near the lake, wonderful. Very specific river and mountain both. Okay. Can somebody like Aditya, I would I, I, if you can respond further. Like you were talking about the skin and the height. Uh, please feel free to talk. Your responses may be wrong, but that's the that's the fun we are going to have. So please feel free to speak speak out. Magician cap, fine. Huge man, fine. Very interesting responses we are getting actually. Uh, so let me summarize. Uh, that is, uh, uh, if you look at a specific man, suppose everyone might be know about Firayal Al Chan. And if I'm standing near Firayal Al Chan, and <coughs> if somebody has to elaborate upon it, so yeah, correct. Vasundhara, it's his dressing style. So we are going to discuss about how do we interpret a specific person. We identify the specific person depending upon his, uh, depending upon his uh, age, correct? His color, the clothes he's wearing, maybe his uh, <coughs> association, closeness to different water body or a mountain. So basically, whenever we are trying to identify any specific feature from a satellite, we basically use such kind of characteristics, the tone or color, the texture. If you look at this specific person, he is a bit more aged and some wrinkles around his face. So the texture is maybe rough. Uh, his association, where is he standing in front of, close by, next to, near to. So these are his associations. Size, big, short tall, medium, round, okay? So you have multiple multi, multiple features based on which you identify a person. A similar kind of interpretation will go for your satellite data also. <coughs> so 
aspect of satellite image interpretation most important interpretation is our texture is association and shadow <coughs> Sorry, I'm having a bit of throat problem. Okay. Not scared with corona, but still. Uh, so we are identifying specific picture or a satellite image whose own texture, shape, size, association, and shadow. Okay, so we have six. I think sir has uh, just some technical issues. Please be patient and wait for him to come back. We were going through a very interesting session, but due to some technical anomalies, we will be just coming back. Please be patient and wait for your resource person to continue the session. Meanwhile, if you have any more queries, anything related to the slide that we were on, uh, please keep posting. We are very happy to see your interest and your different dimensions of thoughts. Please feel free to go on with your queries. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are audible, but you've stopped sharing your screen. Yeah, it's very dark. Is this visible, the slides? Uh, not yet, sir. Yes, we can see your screen starting, your sharing starting. So okay, maybe. maybe it's yeah. Time to You're visible and audible both, sir. Thank you for resuming. Okay. So we'll give it So basically, it is tone, texture, shape, size association and shadow. The primary visual interpretation keys based on which any specific image can be interpreted. What you see in this slide is also a satellite image, but the vegetations are appearing in green. You are, you are able to see the green vegetations. So it's a real or true color composite. It's a TCC. Because what you are able to see is a true representation. So that's called true color composites. In a true color composites, you see everything in real colors. So I repeat again, TCC stands for true color composite. <clears throat> if I'm not audible, I'm also uh, typing it in the uh, YouTube uh, chat box, TCC. That means true color composites. And if you have a different color, 
then it becomes false color composites. Okay. Is that okay? So we have two different types of satellite data images, which is true color and a false color. A true color shows features in its true or natural shades. In a false color, it will be showing in a different shade. Okay. <laughs> so let us start with, uh, proceed to the next example. Uh, this I have taken from a research paper where we had very properly uh, identified the features and given the differences. So, for example, forest encroachment is over here, pinkish red to light green. You can take a few moments to read it properly before I uh, make, uh, make things explain. You can please go through it once. So if you look at this specific uh, satellite data or the images, you will be understanding how things are changing. Vegetation, what I said, was appearing in red. Why it appears red? Because maximum information obtained was in NIR band. NIR band is the colorless band. Since it is a colorless band, so to make it visible, we pass it through the red color gun. And thus, all the information that the vegetation has to give will appear in a red color. Now, as I told, depending upon the health of the tree or the vegetation, the variation of color will be appearing. So you can e easily understand in this specific slide that if it is a dense forest, so the middle image will be seen. If it is an open forest, the color is changing. The diseased plants will have a lower curve. Shivani Kumari, the diseased plant will have a lower curve. because it is an unhealthy plant, okay? Since it's an unhealthy plant, so the chlorophyll content as well as the leaf structure will be damaged. And when it is damaged, so obviously the color tone graph will go down. I'm really sorry if, uh, the, sat if the pictures are not getting very clear at your end. But uh, if you, uh, I can, maybe the host can share the um, slides to the participants later on where they can have a clear view. In fact, it's not very difficult. If after the lecture series is over, you can also open your Google, uh, Google, uh, uh, Google, um, uh, yeah. Google app open karke. You can type uh, false color composite FCC image. For vegetation, so if not type karo ge, so aapko different types of vegetation ka pura satellite data aja hai. So you can understand ki kaise change karna hai. Okay, so agar agar aap type karte ho uh, uh, <coughs> FCC image for agriculture, to uska alag 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 tone aega, uska alag information aega. Dense forest, uska alag image aega. Agar tum sare ko ek saath ek me club up karo ge, then you will be able to understand ki vegetation me. Both are vegetation, but agriculture be vegetation and dense forest be vegetation. And a sir, a cheese ka wo, uh, variation be the kind of success. Okay, but to keep it in a very simple way, you can understand learn or remember it. Kavi bhi satellite data me koi bhi information other red me dikraha hai, matlab wo forest hi hai, matlab vegetation hi hai. Any information, ek dam by heart. Always remember, this is the most basic concept. Any information which is appearing in shades of red has to be vegetation. Lighter shade of red, pink, orange will show agriculture or some kinds of grasslands, 
डेंसर कलर डीपर द कलर इट बिकम्स डेंस फॉरेस्ट ठीक है ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर की लाइट शेड से डेंस शेड तक के बीच का जितना भी शेड होगा कलर का रेड में रेड पिंक ऑरेंज सारा कुछ वेजिटेशन ही होga nothing else and this is where many a time people get confused aur red kyun hota hai kyunki somebody can respond if they want to why it is red i am happy to see many people are responding in uh, in youtube very good see when you guys respond you know you, you give energy to the to the teacher back so it is the it's like an interpretation what we are doing source of energy releasing some information you are capturing it and you giving it back to me very good rahul thank you satyanand monika sapna pooja very thank thank you so much yes priyanshi has uh, why red again so as i told before that uh, vegetation gives maximum information in nir band jo graph sabse pehla slide graph ka tha जो कल भी डॉक्टर परवीन जहरन ने पढ़ाया था और जो मैं आज पढ़ा रहा हूं आप लोगों को फर्स्ट फर्स्ट लेक्चर फर्स्ट स्लाइड में सो द ग्राफ ऑफ एनआईआर शोस मैक्सिमम इंफॉर्मेशन तो ग्राफ जो होता है वो ऊपर मूव करता है सो बट एनआईआर इज अ इनविजिबल बैंड बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट सी इट सो मैक्सिमम इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ वेजिटेशन पैटर्न स्ट्रक्चर इज ऑब्जर्व इन एनआईआर लेकिन एनआईआर तो इनविजिबल बैंड है लेकिन क्योंकि वो इनविजिबल है तो उसको विजिबल करना है so like you know uh, you uh, for example if you remember some movies like hollow man ya mr india so if you remember usko visible kaise kar rahe the if you throw some ink some kind of a thing tab wo visible ho raha tha hai na something like that so वैसे ही हम लोग जब invisible चीज है तो उसको visible में convert करने के लिए we pass it through a red color gun so jo bhi information hai sirf wo red dikhai dena shuru ho jata hai isliye vegetation red dikhta hai okay aman i think he has a question aman kumar gupta okay maybe i will i will answer him later if he has any question fine so this is another example of a satellite image okay so if you look at this image uh, the blue part shows water bodies ओके okay, जहां पे एन लिखा हुआ है नॉर्थ एरो यस लिंक स्टूडियो परफेक्ट आंसर हु एवर इज लिंक स्टूडियो परफेक्ट आंसर प्रियांशी आल्सो अंडरस्टूड थैंक यू सो मच सो इन दी इन दिस स्पेसिफिक स्लाइड इफ यू लुक यू हैव मल्टीपल satellite portions it is it is from the southern part of india and if you look at uh, the slide the blue portion shows a water body okay now blue may be variation dikh raha hai kahin pe light blue kahin pe dark blue so depending upon depth depending upon contamination depending upon uh, content water content so th these are the characteristics this ke karan wo vary karega now if you see there is a sea ओशन का पार्ट दिख रहा है एंड रिवर का पार्ट दिख रहा है इसमें ठीक है ना रिवर इज शैलो सो इट इज लाइट ब्लू इन कलर इफ इट इज डेन डार्क ब्लू इट बिकम्स अ डैम अजर्वायर सो इफ इट इज अ शैलो वाटर बॉडी सो इट इज लाइट ब्लू इन कलर इफ इट इज अ डार्क वाटर बॉडी और डीप वाटर बॉडी इट शोज डिफरेंट शेड ऑफ डार्कर शेड ऑफ ब्लू if it is a polluted water body then the conditions will change it may be at time brown for instance we saw 191 one data for uh, for 1996 year 1996 in which uh, this uh, bada talab ranchi lake ranchi lake was appearing brown so we were very confused why it is appearing brown then we understood that it was highly contaminated and polluted so then uh, this was inferred that maybe because of the contamination the water is appearing as brown now similarly last year when the construction activities were going on around rachi lake so the color was again very different like different shades of blues were coming in over there 
So again, the dam is a disturbance because of concrete and sand getting mixed at intervals. So that disturbance also resulted in the different shades of colors for water bodies. Okay. Now, if you see uh, uh, in this specific slide again, the top portion, the top portion may, if you see red, okay. Now, this red may be, they call top portion may be a red hai, or bottom portion may be kuch red patches. Hai. So, top portion red and bottom portion red, both are different. No, we cannot see underwater movement, Sumitra. Thanks for the question, but we, we cannot see underwater movements. But the, if those movements are resulting in some kind of characteristic changes, if the satellite is at that time above the uh, ocean, then we can actually understand that something is going on in that specific location. Yes, I'm coming to that, Shivani. What is the green color show? Just near the water body, if you see there are certain green patches. Now, this green patch is actually, we, we call it blue-green in color. So this, uh, this green patch is urban areas. So any urban area is shown as blue greenish in tone, which is old structures. Okay. So jitne bhi purane shahar honge, jase ki agar aap ke satellite data lenge, and if you go towards upper bazaar side or HEC side, they will all be in a bluish green tone. Because urban density is very high, hai, clubbed up hai maha pe. So at times everything will be looking like bluish green tone. Okay. Now, Usike Beach may if you observe there are certain white patches, square white patches. So square white patches could be, could be. Always remember in remote sensing, we cannot assure everything at 100 percent unless and until we have done a ground study, a ground verification. But with time, as you go for more experience level of surveys, then you can identify. Basically, when we were studying, we were told that you have to write always could be. It could be vegetation. It could be water. Body. Why? Because we were just learning at that time. But since from last 10 years when we are working, so we know anything of this stone is this. If a dense forest, it will be dark maroon shade. If a bluish green tone, it will be urban area. So this is the benefit. If you have a ground verification and you have identified the cause of feature, this color is the season. So, in every season, it will be the same. So, largely, you can cover up every year data and understand how things are changing. So, the change is the same. You can verify it. 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 Light pink shows agriculture. Or maybe a grassland. Now it depends on the shape, kya hai, size. Kya hai. Agar aap jahan pe light pink push rahe ho, wahan pe dekho ek circular pattern bhi mujhe nazar mein aara hai. So if it is light pink and circular pattern, even shape, that can be a playground. Okay? So generally playground, basketball courts, or football courts, uh, maybe an open arena, running ground, they at time may be oval in shape. Stadiums, so, go her eight shapes, is the one of tone, texture, shape, size, association. In sub Kizuko Milakari, Hamlo, which is interpret. Right? So, for example, let me give you one example of river or maybe urban water, uh, urban area. Tone of urban area is bluish green. Then we have texture. In some portion, it is rough, in some portion, it is smooth. So rough to smooth. Shape, it is irregular in shape. No uniformity. If you go to plant township, it will have a uniform shape. Either, for example, Durgapur, it is circular in pattern. Connaught place, circular in pattern. Okay? So multiple different, different types of uh, patterns can be understood in this. Uh, <coughs> HC, again, a very patterned, rectangular pattern of uh, township. So you will, you will understand these things. Yes, Devjani, I'm Devjani, I'm just coming to your point. Fine. Uh, so always remember anything in shades of pink, orange, red, maroon. Light shades, light orange, light pink, 
दिख रहा है मतलब वहां पे वाइब्रेशन का जो पैटर्न है वो लाइट हल्का फुल्का है मतलब इट कैन बी इट कैन बी श्रब्स इट कैन बी ग्रासलैंड्स पैचिंग पैची एरियाज मे बी अ लॉन ठीक है जहां पे उसका डेंसिटी बढ़ता है लाइक जो सी इन दिस इमेज जो टॉप पोर्शन का जो रेड कलर है वो कुछ इररेगुलर पैटर्न में दिख रहा है ठीक है ना नॉट लाइक द वन व्हिच इज वेरी स्मूथ इन द बॉडी तो दैट मींस वहां पे कुछ इररेगुलर पैटर्न में वेजिटेशन है तो इट हैज टू बी फॉरेस्ट क्योंकि फॉरेस्ट का कोई यूनिफॉर्म साइज नहीं है इट इज नॉट प्लेन ऑर्चर्ड होगा मैंग्रोव फॉरेस्ट होगा मैंग्रोव फॉरेस्ट भी बहुत कुछ ऑलमोस्ट सेम साइज में रहता है बट इफ यू गो फॉर डेंस वेजिटेशन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल साल फॉरेस्ट तो हिली टेरेन में वो आएगा तो हिली टेरेन के कारण उसका एलिवेशन चेंज हो रहा था एज द एलिवेशन चेंजेस सो द पैटर्न विल ऑल्सो चेंज नो कमिंग टू द वाइट पॉइंट सो द वाइट पॉइंट इज बेसिकली एनीथिंग विच इज शोइंग हाई रिफ्लेक्टेंस मतलब वाटर कंटेंट बिल्कुल जीरो है अभी वहां पर तभी वो बिल्कुल हाई रिफ्लेक्टेंस दे रहा है जनरली वाइट रिफ्लेक्टेंस हम लोगों को स्टैंड से ऑब्जर्व होता है वेरी हाई रिफ्लेक्टेंस कम्स फ्रॉम स्टैंड so sand is highly porous <coughs> the water holding capacity is very low so it becomes like maybe a patch of sand could be there uh, at times uh, if you have a mining area where you have blasting going on wahan pe bhi as a white tone aa sakta hai blasted blasting area ka so white tone will vary lekin tumhe fir site mein jaake inspection karna padega ye hai kya cheez if you are getting confused site mein jaakar ek baar inspection karna hoga ki what this is okay and then i have what black line shows black line is the boundary it is the district boundary okay hum logo ne kya kiya hai satellite data ke upar district boundary ko overlay kar diya hai similarly aap jharkhand ke liye bhi kar sakte ho jharkhand ka satellite data lekar pure jharkhand ka jo district boundary hai block boundary hai village boundary hai sab overlay kar sakte ho so now you can understand कि अगर हर एक चीज ओवरले कर लेंगे तो वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई ना कि कौन से विलेज कौन से गांव में एग्रीकल्चर ज्यादा हो रहा है कौन से गांव में जंगल ज्यादा है तो सी यू कैन एप्लीकेशन इमेजिन करो अगर इस, यही सैटेलाइट है डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैप है इसको हम लोग डिवाइड कर देते हैं योर वार्ड वाइज सिटी है तो वार्ड होगा वार्ड डिवाइड कर देते हैं कौन से वार्ड में यू कैन गो फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल टाउनशिप कौन से वार्ड में अर्बन एरियाज है कौन से वार्ड में तुम्हारा एग्रीकल्चरल पैटर्न ज्यादा हो रहा है सो अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन डू सो मेनी एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड अंडरस्टैंड द होल होस्ट एडियर विदाउट इवन गोइंग दैट ठीक है तो यू नीड टू हैव द सेटेलाइट इमेज यू नीड टू हैव द बाउंड्री मैप वेन यू ओवरले दम ऑन ईच अदर यू विल बी एबल टू डू सो मेनी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ स्टडीज नो वाइट पैच विद इन अर्बन एरियाज जैसे ग्रीन पैच के बीच में भी व्हाइट पैचेज आ रहे हैं और कुछ कुछ व्हाइट पैच स्क्वेर स्क्वेयर माइन्यूट स्क्वेयर में दैट इज शोइंग new construction sites any new construction have reflection of balu sand ka reflection aayega usme theek hai jaise jaise building ka age hota hai to wo bluish green tone mein change ho jata hai lekin jaise new construction site hota hai jahan pe zyada construction activity chalega sand ke karan high reflectance rehta hai fine so i hope this is clear from my end okay so i am going to the next slide Fine. Now I would request a few of you. Uh, Abhinav Sharan Singh, sir, Aditya, आज भी draining survey पे जाता है. Draining survey नहीं समझ में आया. What do you mean by draining survey? Field survey. anyway chalo uh, what i would i would ask is uh, based on this satellite data can you write down what does pink color could be what pink color may be yes shilpi you can see the canal system also it will be a very thin line but you can see the canal system i need the responses in the youtube perfectly fine okay so i think you are grasping what i am trying to explain the light pink is agriculture 
any other things which you think it could be plantation area fine yes puja is also correct it could be a plantation area it can be a planned plantation area it could be a herbal garden very good thank you so much very good to see all of you responding so much sorry nidhi it, it should not be forest yes grassland open area open area but if it has grasses then melani it could be open area but it has to have grasses in it or some vegetation perfectly fine so let me go to the next one mm. if you can see on the screen on the top left on the top left there is something like a dark blue shade something with black dots dark blue color can you please respond for what is the dark blue color okay deep water body it can be a contaminated water canal fine it can be a reservoir system perfectly fine very good it could be a dam yes it could be a dam c abhinav sharan singh how can it be c abhinav how can it be c shehar ke beech mein kya c hota hai kya kabhi shehar ke beech mein kabhi c nahi hoga hai na it has to be a water body now it can be a reservoir it can be a pond or a tank or maybe a water treatment plant theek hai so we have to verify it may be this 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 options but it has to be verified perfectly fine now there's a difference between a normal water body and a dam if it is a dam so one side will be a linear pattern theek hai because you have a you need to have a constructed straight pattern where the water barrage will be created so a dam is dam dam confirm kar sakte hain agar ek side pura ek linear pattern hai इस फीचर में भी एक लीनियर पैटर्न है बट वो लीनियर पैटर्न मुझे रोड की तरफ दिखाई दे रहा है सो आई एम नॉट वेरी श्योर वेदर दिस इज अ डैम बट आई एम श्योर दिस इज सम काइंड ऑफ अ वाटर बॉडी व्हिच इज क्लोज टू अ क्लोज टू अ रोड फॉर एग्जांपल रांची के पीछे जो आप जाओगे लाइन टैंक रोड में तो वैसे ऐसे ही सेम काइंड ऑफ फीचर तुम्हें नजर पे नजर आएगा गुड सो यू ऑल आर पास इन द स्पेसिफिक so we'll be pushing after this okay i hope you are enjoying everybody let us identify the next feature um there is a small rectangular white patch on the left side of the screen left lower side of side of the screen small white rectangular patch at the left bottom side of the screen what what that white patch could be thank you puja good response
fine. That's a construction site. It may, it is a new building that is coming up. Yes, perfect, Rupa. That's because of high reflectance. Very good. Fine. So more or less what I understand, you guys have understood the basic interpretation. Okay. So we go to the next slide. Anything which is red has to do with vegetation. If it is a small red patch or a big red patch, it has to do with vegetation. Alia, I, I hope it's okay. Now, in this specific slide that I'm sharing now, it's, it is of a site which is showing two different types of elevation ranges. Why I'm exposing you to these satellite data is maybe you will understand that if a hilly terrain, hai, for example, those living in Uttaranchal, Himachal Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, all the hilly terrains, what kind of information you can achieve? Or the uh, plain area, Gangetic plain. So if you look at this slide, you have a combination of both the aspects. The top portion showing a hilly terrain and the bottom portion showing the planar area. So you can easily understand it is very thin rivers when it is in a hilly terrain. The moment it comes to the bottom side, it becomes a broad river. So you can understand the impact of flooding, how the impact of flooding will be. How will you differentiate? One question, how will you differentiate the red color in the top portion and the red color in the bottom portion? It is a dense forest, I agree, but the difference kya hoga dono mein? Can I get some responses? That's right, Shweta. The top portion is a dense forest, but the bottom portion is also a dense forest. Vasundara is quite close. Correct. Venita. The top red color is rough and the bottom red color is smooth. Perfectly fine. Now to elaborate further on this, the top red color which is rough in nature is because it is on a hilly terrain. So, Paharo Kutta Jab Janga, so is the same as you visualize us. Why play camera ega to what smooth texture the Kaidega? Because almost, almost of the same, same elevation. Okay. So, uh, I will not be dragging much on this. So, the top portion is forest on hilly terrain, the bottom portion is forest on a plain area. What are the white patches in this? Yes, Mupur, you're correct. By texture, we can differentiate. Very good. I think I'm very satisfied with how the way you're responding. So my next question is, what are the white patches?
Yes, I got uh, some of you got confused with sand, but in such high elevation at the peak of a mountain, you will generally never find such sand patches. It's uh, something other things. For example, some of you have answered snow. Uh, partially, I will agree because you imagined it as a mountain area, so snow can be present over there. But uh, at present, if you look at this, this is the cloud. It's a cloud patch. Okay. Snow, all the same elevation will have snow patches everywhere. This is an irregular pattern of cloud. So, badal agar aap dekhenge, to badal upar se aise dikhai dega. So, jahan bhi badal dikhta hai, badal ke karan wahan ke jo patches se wo under ke forest we will not be seen. So, this is a specific patch which is having cloud cover. So, isme cloud cover dikh raha hai. So now you understand association. Okay. Stand near sea, white patch. White patch in hilly terrain, irregular in pattern, is clouds. Okay. So you can you now you can understand square, rectangular, white patch, construction site. Irregular distribution of white patch along a water body is sand. Small white patches, irregular in shape. Okay? If you look at the other patches also, you will be able to understand that this is glass. Good. Now, those who said no, so now you can understand in a very close up view how will snow appear and how will cloud appear. So, when we zoom in, so we will be able to see the shadow effect. Cloud ka ek shadow effect. And you can see there's a black patch of the cloud in this specific image. And you can also see the pattern of snow. When snow is there, it will be in a larger scale. Okay. And cloud coverage will be in a smaller scale, unless and until it is a monsoon season. Monsoon season may cloud cover zyada bada ho sakta hai. Aur hum lo satellite data analysis ke liye optical remote sensing mein agar cloud cover zyada hota hai, to we reject that satellite image. We don't use it because wo humare kisi information ka nahi hoga. Kyun nahi hoga? If you look at this satellite data, ab tum dekho jahan pe black patch hai, wahan pe saara information gaib ho gaya hai, shadow ke karan. So, what was agriculture? What was it? We didn't understand it. But because there is a lot of vegetation and agriculture, we can tell that yeah, this could be agriculture. But this is the negative effect of a cloud curve. So, when we do atmospheric correction, we try to remove these errors. Okay? So, when you go for a full-time course on remote sensing and GIS, then you can learn such aspects of correction of data, more in interpretation. As I all uh, as I discussed right now earlier, the black patch is the shadow of the cloud, and you can also see the snow. It is very smooth, smooth and very a lot of expanse. That's the urban settlement. Hill terrain hoga, ya local terrain kahi pe hoga, to wahan pe rural area type ka patchiness aaya hua hai. Cloud cover is not black pratiksha, it is the shadow of the cloud. Kisi ka bhi jab shadow padhta hai, to black rehta hai na. Clouds will be small, irregular and less bright as compared to snow. Snow will be in larger area more smooth and it will expand in almost all these satellite patches. Cloud cover jo hoga, small patches may chote chote portions mein rahenge. Pure ek data mein nahi rahenge. Jabki agar snow hoga, to wo pure database mein bada hoa rahega. Okay, I'm again repeating this, Ria. Cloud and snow and sand. All these three appear white. White 
अगर व्हाइट पैच अगर आपको समुद्र या पानी के आजू बाजू दिख रहा है देन यू अज्यूम इट एज सैंड अगर किसी बिल्टअप एरिया के अंदर में दिखता है तो इट कैन बी न्यू कंस्ट्रक्शन साइट वेर एज अगर वो किसी सैटेलाइट इमेज में एज अ स्मॉल व्हाइट पैच इरेगुलर दिख रहा है देन इट बिकम्स अ क्लाउड वही अगर स्नो है तो स्नो का जो एक्सपैंस होता है दैट एक्सपैंस विल बी इन वॉल्यूमन साइज सो एरिया विल बी मच मोर एज कम्पेयर टू क्लाउड दे विल बी मोर स्मूथ ठीक है इरेगुलर पैटर्न नहीं रहेगा वो बिल्कुल आपके फीचर के हिसाब से शेप लेगा जैसे क्लाउड देखो क्लाउड इरेगुलर है वो फीचर के हिसाब से शेप नहीं लिया है जबकि स्नो जो है वो आपके लैंड स्ट्रक्चर के हिसाब से शेप लेता है ओके इट इज नाइदर फॉरेस्ट नॉर फार्मिंग वसुंधरा सो दिस इज माय लास्ट स्लाइड ऑलमोस्ट uh spectral signatures of vegetation are in red to maroon spectral signatures of water is from light to dark blue what are the other spectral signatures sand is white cloud is again white new buildings are again white how do you differentiate sand is white but irregular close to urban areas or water bodies clouds are white patches irregular may have a shadow effect new buildings will again have white but they will be rectangular in shape they have fixed shape fixed shape either depending upon the shape of the building rectangular square or could be oval depending on whatever design it is it will not be irregular okay so this is the whole thing i hope you are able to grasp something from the soul slide so thank you very much uh, you you can ask your questions on youtube i am ready to answer you can do one thing since the session is going to end it will be followed by a, a question answer session so after the question answering quiz is over uh, you can have your lunch and then you can just explore some satellite data you can open your satellite data in your uh, image in your in your smartphone or in your laptops so maybe it will be uh, you can identify more feature okay aap log apne google search mein fcc of vegetation या एफ सी सी ऑफ अर्बन एरिया टाइप करके यू कैन सी मोर एग्जाम्पल्स ठीक है और अगर उसमें कुछ कंफ्यूजन लग रहा है कहीं कुछ डाउट लग रहा है फिर से तो वी कैन अगेन डिस्कस आई हैव सेशन अगेन इन दिस सेकेंड हाफ फ्रॉम थ्री ओ क्लॉक तो हम लोग फिर से एक रिकैप करते हुए फिर आगे बढ़ेंगे हम लोग ओके थैंक्स अ लॉट Dr Kirti can you please stop sharing your screen yes so we have a few questions um yeah. that i just picked up here and there would you like to answer them sir of course of course um aditya anand asks that uh, can sewage pattern be seen through images like this no <laughs> <laughs> i guess so but i thought of asking yeah. you um uh, another question comes it what is the maximum resolution to cover the area it's a very vague See, question no, again, but are, i don't know yeah there are two different perspective in this when we say resolution with respect to handheld cameras so larger the resolution better the camera right whereas in case of satellite remote sensing we have to understand smaller the smaller the value more clear more clear the image will be Mm -hmm. so if the spatial resolution is 1 meter so it's the image is even more clear okay so by 1 meter resolution you can go for sewage analysis but by 23 meter resolution you cannot go for sewage analysis 
So urban planners can actually use Iconos data, which you have, which you, which you have very high resolution of one one meter, point six, point six meters. But for uh, city planning, you go for twenty three meters. For regional planning, you go for one eighty eight meters. So the coarser the satellite the spatial resolution, lesser the information. But depends on how and what you want to use. For. Sure. So there is another one, a small one. Why is there any satellite image source which has both spatial and temporal resolutions? Uh, it's asked by Ritika Bhat. Yes, Ritika, uh, as I already showed in one of my slides, all these sensors have all these four sensors as resolutions. Okay? Koi bhi sensor ke paas charo resolutions ho nahi hai. Spatial, spectral, temporal, or radiometric. Ye charo ho nge tabhi wo kaam kare. Tabhi wo image have... ki quality mein variations hai na. Yes, so I have my own question here. Yes, please. See, suppose I have two trees in my courtyard, a neem tree and a mango tree. And uh, would they both have different reflectance values? Yes, yes. And what would that depend on? Say, suppose I've planted them at the same date and they've grown simultaneously. Perfectly so, fine. Yeah, so what would the reflectance value depend on? Would it depend on the nature of the trees just because they're different species? Or uh, would it depend on uh, the health all these what factors are contributing to it. For example, if you look at neem trees, neem trees have very thin leaves. Okay. The yeah. size of the leaf is also very small. Whereas if you look at the mango trees, that leaf size is varying. So the number of mm -hmm. mesophyll tissues will be greater in case of a mango tree as compared to a neem tree. So the reflectance mm -hmm. of neem will be maybe light pinkish or darker shade of pink, whereas a mango will be giving you a, a tone of red. Okay. Right, okay. Right. And if it but, is diseased, then again hmm. the shade will vary. Okay, Suppose a mango tree is diseased, so the shade will go down. And as the as the leaf thickness increases, uh, so the number of uh, uh, spongy mesophylls will also increase. So again, the uh, denseness will increase. So when light pink say it goes to maroon shade. So the more uh, you can see the foliage of a tree, the darker would be the shade of red. Darker, yes, yes. Does it have anything to do with the oxygen content that they give out? I mean, I don't know uh, if no, they are related. No, no. So uh, from if, these if images, see... these images, we would never be able to understand whether, you know, a particular patch in on earth is giving out what content of oxygen. I mean, no, no, no. We can, uh, we can go for biomass estimation. So mm -hmm. biomass estimation can be conducted in which if you go for a denser patch of forest and then estimating its biomass, then you can estimate the uh, amount of carbon that is, it is storing. Okay. okay. And uh, similarly for a thin patch, so that variations can be done. But uh, oxygen generation capacity will depend on the photosynthetic equation that you have to do manually. May I add something over here, Katie? Uh, Sukanya, uh, taking your question a little further that oxygen generation is sometimes it is balanced by if there is a patch, if there's a rice field next to it, which generates methane. So you okay. just can't say hmm. that it, it is just giving oxygen. It can be, you know, balanced that way also. So carry on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very interesting. Very. very interesting. In fact, it was a it was a, a class apart. I think the very fact that so many students joined in we feel thrilled that uh, Nirmala College could do such an online program and have such a good response. Yeah. Thanks to the mentor. Sukanya, Thank you for giving us an opportunity. Sukanya, please carry on. Yeah. Thank you, sir. That was an immensely interesting session. I, I mean, very augmentative. And to be true, it has raised my appetite and curiosity for the subject. I being from a different stream altogether, uh, though environment is my subject, but this is a different issue, a different part holistically, and it has captured my interest so much that I'm going to go further with it. And I'm sure you'll be able to guide me through also, as of many of our participants are. And I'm very sure, looking at the responses of the participants, that they have enjoyed this 
thoroughly. And it has been a leap forward, as Ma'am says, um, a step, a huge step forward in uh, the history of a college in coming up with such a program with so much of interaction and life in a workshop. Thank you so you much. As I always, uh, I initiated initiated my talk with, this is the most creative part of uh, remote sensing. It's an artistic world. So uh, it's yeah. a very fascinating thing to see color variations, playing with the different colors. So hopefully, uh, like uh, when Milliman will also be dealing with the soft aspects, he will learn something more. So then uh, you can explore further explore many, many, many other things. Absolutely, sir. And Thank as you. Mother Nature has given us endless opportunities, man has, you know, taken these opportunities to learn more and create more through the man-made technologies, that is spatial technologies. You've made the entire complex ana analysis and, you know, of satellite data look so simple, so clear, and you've deliberated with great clarity, sir. Uh, that is uh, very well reflected through the student interaction in this program. I thank you so much for this great value addition. The power of GIS lies in its ability to analyze relationships between features and their associated data. We now know and understand that GIS combined with RS technology can manage different data types, occupying the same geographic space, that is even if predator, prey, and plants occupy the same geographic region, they can be mapped as dictated distinct and separate features depending on their reflectance values. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again for this great session. A word of appreciation and heartfelt gratitude to our patron for providing us this platform of knowledge enhancement and to our dynamic CP coordinator for her continual support and encouragement. The entire organizing team for their endless efforts for making this a great success and all participants for their patient and active listening and great interaction, which made this session full of energy and highly interesting. Thank you once again to all. Um, and we would take a break. Uh, Sukanya, may I interrupt you? Please announce about the feedback form. Yes, ma'am, I, I will. Feedback I form. And uh, I yeah. think uh, it's not visible on the YouTube. So uh, they can go back to the WhatsApp group for the feedback form. So please. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. A small uh, announcement for the participants. The feedback form along with your QA quiz will be, the link will be posted to you on YouTube and your WhatsApp group. If you don't find the link on YouTube, please wait for the link on WhatsApp group. Fill it up within an hour because we give just an hour for you to answer it. If you have any queries, as sir asked you to come up with your queries in the beginning of the next session, we take a short break and come back for a fourth session at 3 p.m. sharp for spectral bands and indices in RS with our most interesting and esteemed mentor, Dr. K. Abhishek. So with the permission of the chair and RCP coordinator, I would conclude this session here so that we can come refreshed and with more questions, more interesting topics to be seen and discussed at 3 p.m. sharp. See you then, sir. See you then, ma'am. See you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. At 3 p.m. Thank you, sir.